Here at Global West, we do quite a few Mosier installations, and we thought we'd take a second here to show you what we do to get a Mosier differential ready for powder coat and install. This happens to be a 9-inch for a Chevelle, and the first thing we're going to do is put the studs, and as you can see, we are put a little bit of gasket seal on the studs, and what we're showing you here is those are at the base, so that's where the oil is going to be. So we want to make sure that those studs have some gasket seal around them. Now if you notice we have spacers and washers that we're using to pull these studs in. We have those here because we do a lot of these. You at home may not have that and you could actually use washers. A series of washers on each stud and you would be able to do the same thing. But like I say here we've already got spacers made up so it makes it easy for us because we do so many of these. We're going to use this procedure all the way around on the studs till we get them all done. Once we've achieved this the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get it ready for the brake lines. Now we do a lot of braided steel brake lines here and we do custom line work on the differentials before we send them out. So this is some of the steps that we do here and that happens to be for the center from your frame down to the differential in the center of the car. And then we're going to prep it and we prep the differential to get a real nice powder coat finish. Once it comes back from powder coat we have this plate here. There's a series of plates we have on the differential that protect the inside of the differential. We're going to pop these plates and you can see how nice the powder coat looks at this point. Okay, what we're going to do now is we'll install the cap. That happens to be the fill cap on the Mosier. Our next step, we're going to use Permatex gasket seal and we're going to install some around each stud. As you can see here as we're going around, make a nice full circle. And then we're going to run a bead line from stud to stud. After you do this on the differential, all the way around, the next step will be installing the gasket. Once we get that in position, then we'll go ahead and drop that third member in. I'm going to drop right on down as you can see. Mosier provides hardware obviously for their differentials and it's going to have a thick washer, lock washer, and a nut. So you're going to go around and just put these down real quick. What we do is we go ahead and tighten those down and we we don't do them all in a row. We go back and forth across well, so you're not torquing just one side. And of course once we get those down to a point where we can torque them, as you can see here we're we're stepping them around and we're torquing those in. This happens to be uh, the next step where we'll just drop the drive shaft U-bolts through, put the nut washer on there, and, and the next thing we're going to do is install axle seals. We have a large aluminum piece there that covers the full face of the axle seal. And you want to cover the full face of the axle seal so when you tap it in there's a register in there. You want to make sure that it picks up on the outside, not in the center where the seal is itself because you can actually damage the axle seal if you don't do it properly. So when you're tapping that aluminum piece that you've seen us have there, that goes right to the outer edge and so we're picking up on the lip itself. We're going to go ahead and drop the studs in. This particular build happens to be getting a Willwood rear disc brake kit. So the first thing we're going to do is slide the backing plate over the studs and then we're going to install the axle. want to be real careful sliding that axle in so you don't damage that inner seal. Once we get to that position, bearing slides in. Willwood has a retainer. That's a bearing retainer and it's got a step on it. That step goes towards the bearing and the slot goes upward. You're going to slide that in up and position it over the studs get the nuts started. Sometimes that's a little tricky. After you get to that point, you're going to go ahead and run the studs down. Now we'll use an impact just to bring them on down, but after that we're going to go ahead and torque them. We're going to go ahead and, uh, as you can see here, we're, we're torquing the axle flange nuts. Our next step is installing the hat and rotor assembly want to slide that onto the axle and you want to go ahead and run it down here with a couple of half inch washers on each stud some half inch nuts and tighten that down and we want that rotor on there tight because what the next thing we got to do is position the caliper properly on the caliper bracket and we want the caliper in the center of the rotor so that's why we put those on there it's hard to do if the rotors flopping around this is a radial mount type caliper so the first thing we're going to do is mount that on there and look at the distance from fore and aft to make sure that the rotor is in the center of the caliper and it's not. We have to run a washer on the bracket to move it over 
And once we've achieved the proper distance, then we're going to go put a little red Loctite on and reinstall that caliper bracket onto the backing plate. Once we've got that on, and we know that the rotor now is in the center of the caliper, now we have to do the height. And of course, uh, there's a torque spec here, and that'll be in your well-wooded structure sheet as well. These spacers here are what space the caliper up so that the pads will sit properly on the rotor. Now we're setting the height of the pad on the rotor is what we're doing. Go ahead and check them out. Put your pads in there because we've already done the lateral positioning of this. Now we're doing the height. Make sure those seated properly. All the pins are down. All right. And what you're looking for is to make sure that brake pad is right at the top of the rotor there. Not above it, but right at the very top. Right there. That's what you're looking for. You don't want the pad to be above that. You may have to do an adjustment at this point. Add shims, take away shims. One one thing or another, it really doesn't matter. The point is, is you got to have, it's whatever you need to do to get that height right. So the shims, even on this one here, we may not be using any. Next one you may need some. So it's it's like whatever you need to do to get that height right is all it's all that's what it's all about. We've got that all ready to go. Here's uh this is for the breather. You're gonna have to install that. And after this, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and work on the brake lines. So you're gonna be installing your you know, uh, what we do here is we'll install our AeroQuip braided steel line stuff. And we're going to custom build some hard lines. All of our differentials, we custom build hard lines. There's no kit that you can just buy just to go directly on. We, we make each one to the differential for what we're doing. You can see it's uh, there. That takes a, that's an eighth pipe right there. You can see we... Has some uh, tape on there for sealing, putting the bulkhead fittings on. Now this happens to be a DB55 kit is what we're installing here. And this goes for whether it's a 9 inch or a, just about anything. This DB55 kit works great with any of the Willwood kits. And you can see how that installs. After we get that completed, we're going to go ahead and work on the hard line. So we're going to bend the hard line accordingly. And we'll form that around the differential and route everything. So when you get the differential back from us, everything is done. It's ready to go. So that gives you a good idea on how we assemble these. And whether it's for a 12-bolt, 10-bolt, or if it's a, for a uh, Impala or whatever we're doing, uh, Mustang, uh, the procedures are all the same pretty much. And it should look just like this.